try to I'll try to stick to the timetable. So hi everyone. Um, as you heard, I'm more Salker. I'm the tech lead for the uh, ITC Fellows Program. So that means I'm designing the syllabus for the program. I'm also one of the lecturers, so I give a lot of the lectures in the course, both from some of the more introductory topics, but especially later in the course when we're talking about more advanced machine learning and deep learning. I'm sure you've at least heard those terms. You might not know exactly what they mean yet. Um, but today I want to talk to you about the world of data scientists. So, you know, on one leg, as they say in Hebrew, I'll try to talk about um, what data science is, what, what does it mean to be a data scientist? What are data scientists doing? And a little bit about the ITC Fellows Program and how we fit into that. Okay, so first of all, data science in general um, and data scientists. Well, the term data scientist kind of became a buzzword and I'm sure given that you're all participating in the webinar, I think you've all heard the term and you're clearly interested in data science, but you might not know exactly what it means. Um, so why is this a buzzword? Well, from my understanding, the term data scientist started being used a lot in 2012 when this article was published in the Harvard Business Review. So a lot of people saw this headline, data scientist, the sexiest job of the 21st century. Now, in my opinion, people have been doing data science a lot longer before this article was published, but they didn't used to call it data science. There was statistics and data analysis, which now means something a little bit different. Um, but since this article was published, everyone started talking about how data science is cool and how every company needs a data scientist. Um, it definitely became a really kind of sexy job. Everyone was talking about it. Um, but not everyone knows what it means. <laughs> uh, and I, I want to talk a little bit about what a data scientist is. What does that actually mean? So what is data science? Well, I have this definition from Wikipedia, which is pretty nice. So Wikipedia says it's a field that uses scientific methods, processes, and algorithms to extract knowledge and insights from noisy data. So data in general would be like information that we can collect. It could be from web pages. It could be from you know user interactions. It could be from all these different sources. And as data scientists, our job is to collect this data, process it, gain insights from it, and create business value, meaning create things that companies can actually use to get some kind of value. So typically, as data scientists, we're extracting value from data using statistics. So that's math, probability, et cetera. Coding, the ability to actually sit at a computer and write code that will do something useful. Algorithms and machine learning and AI. That's maybe the coolest part of data science. science. Uh, that means actually writing algorithms, things that will run on your computer that are able to make intelligent decisions and uh, intelligently process data and get insights from data. So I'll give a few examples to make this more concrete. Um, but first of all, why is everyone talking about data science now? Um, why has it become so popular? You know, why does the fellows program exist in the first place? Well, analyzing data isn't new. Actually, statistics goes back over a thousand years. Uh, for a long time, people have been looking at data and thinking, how can we understand the data? What information can we get from it? But in my opinion, analyzing data and data science specifically have become really important in the past few decades for the following reasons. I mean, nowadays we're basically living in a digital world. All of our interactions are online or using different digital media, social media, the internet, et cetera. And that means that we have huge quantities of data. You know, back in the old days with classical statistics, people were looking at tables of like, you know, maybe a hundred examples of something or other. But nowadays we can collect billions of samples of data about all sorts of different things. So we have much larger quantities of data. A lot of the data is unstructured. So things like web data, multimedia data, images on the internet, user interactions, internet of things. These all create lots of data. And a lot of the time the data is not really clean. It's not like in a nice table you can analyze. The data is all over the place and someone needs to actually process it to gain insights from it. 
Um, and finally, we have much more computing power than we did before. So before computers, people had to write calculations by hand. Nowadays, we can also perform billions of calculations quite quickly just using our computer. And that means we're able to do things with the data that we weren't able to do before. So a data scientist nowadays is someone who has these three different skill sets. I really like this Venn diagram, the data science Venn diagram from Drew Conway, which shows that a data scientist needs to have hacking skills. So to be able to program, to create things on your computer, um, math and statistics knowledge, so you can actually understand, um, you can understand patterns in the data and understand how to gain insights from the data. Uh, and substantive expertise, which Drew Conway used to mean understanding the actual problem you're working on. Uh, let's say if you're working in the medical field, trying to look at medical data, maybe actually understanding something about different diseases or understanding something about the medical field that you're working in. So being a data scientist means combining all of these different skill sets together in order to extract value from data. Um, and I wanna give some cool examples of different ways that data science is being used in the industry. So these are just a few examples. Of course, there are a lot more. I don't have space on the slide to list all of them, but I just wanted to list off some that I think are interesting. Um, and we're actually learning about all of these different uh, models that could be applied to these use cases in the fellows program. So some examples of ways that data science is used in the industry would include image recognition. That means that the computer actually looks at an image and tries to understand what's in it. And we teach that in the computer vision part of the fellows program. So for example, this is used a lot in the medical, uh, the medical industry. There are all sorts of different types of tests that can be performed by scans. Here on the right, I have a brain scan. Um, a lot of the time, there are tons of scans that are done and you need expert doctors to read them and understand if there's a problem in the scan. Um, and there isn't enough manpower to be able to go through and look at all these scans. So the idea is the computer would say, look at this and actually say, okay, this looks like there's a problem. This looks like there's a disease. This scan looks like it's healthy. And again, that's something that we'll learn about the tools that can be used for performing something like that. Uh, other applications include fraud detection. So companies like credit card companies, for example, are constantly collecting data on purchases people are making. And if you see a weird purchase, like I live in Israel, if suddenly someone buys something really expensive in India with my credit card, um, then the credit card company wants an algorithm that will automatically send a warning that this purchase looks like it's fraudulent. Other examples include sentiment analysis. So companies would like to follow user reviews of their products and say, this is a negative review or this is a positive review just by looking at the text. Recommendation systems. So this is things like on Netflix or on YouTube, where according to what you watch, the system will recommend you more things to watch. Or e-commerce sites like Amazon, where you buy some stuff and then it recommends you more products. That also uses machine learning. Uh, energy usage prediction. So I know energy companies wanna be able to predict at what times and what dates there'll be more energy usage or less in different locations so they can decide how to allocate resources. Uh, autonomous systems, one example is autonomous vehicles. So everyone's talking about this. Um, you know, if we want a car that can drive itself, it has to be able to look at the road in front of it and see where the street is and see if they're people so that it doesn't run them over and so forth and, and much more. So all these different fields are able to leverage huge quantities of data and computing power and algorithms to be able to extract value. Okay, now I'll just zoom in on one specific example out of many, um, but this is one that I thought was interesting. So one other task that data science can be applied to is supply chain management. This means, you know, uh, supermarkets have to decide how much of different products to buy. And in so sometimes, or in some locations, there might be more demand for a product or less demand for a product. And then according to that, the suppliers have to decide 
how much how much of products to buy from wholesalers and where to ship the products and how to allocate, let's say like trucks that will deliver the products. And someone has to manage this whole supply chain. So Blue Yonder is one company that does this, that does supply chain management. Um, and they've said that they use a lot of machine learning and data science to manage the supply chain because it becomes really complex. Uh, so I said here, what happens behind the scenes when you buy milk at the grocery store? Well, in order for there to be milk at the grocery store for you to buy, someone has to predict how much milk is going to be in demand in different locations. Let's say throughout Israel, maybe here I expect there'll be more demand for milk, here I expect there'll be less demand for milk. Um, and according to that, we also have to decide how much each grocery store should order, which will depend on demand, and it will also depend, depend on things like where trucks are located, um, where the factories are located, and so forth. And in order to be able to do that, you know, you need a lot of people to sit down and think really hard to figure it out, but it turns out computers can really help us with this. Data science helps because we have a lot of data about the past, and we can use that to predict the future. So Blue Yonder has to do things like forecasting store level demand for milk, figuring out at which stores people are going to want more or less milk, um, optimize the store and distribution center networks. So they have to decide like where to put distribution centers, um, where, to, where to send trucks, um, how to load products onto trucks, all sorts of complicated things. I'm not an expert in supply chain uh, management, but, I can understand that this sounds very complicated and it's something that computers can definitely help us with. Um, so this is from their presentation. You can see that in order to predict, say how much demand there'll be for products, they have to look at all these different variables. So how much say milk was sold at this time of year in, different lo in, in a certain location, um, how much milk is available? Are there promotions? Like right now there's a sale on milk, so I expect more people will buy it in this location, so I should supply more. The weather, I don't know, maybe people buy milk more when it's hot outside. Um, or if there's an event, like, uh, you know, I live next to a sports stadium, so maybe if there's a sports event, then there's going to be more demand and so forth. And then they use all of that to create a model that will predict uh, demand which would be some kind of regression model, which is something that we learn about in the fellows course. Okay, so you can see they have some gigantic table of data that looks something like this. So at different locations, they're tracking um, something like how much of each product was sold at a certain location and what its price was, and maybe also things like what the weather was and so forth. And they use all of this data from the past to create some forecasting model that'll predict the future. Okay, so this is just one specific example of a task that can be performed with machine learning uh, and data science, but you know, almost every industry has something like this, some kind of data that they're able to collect and some kind of problem that they'd like to be able to solve automatically with the data. And that's where data scientists come in. So a data scientist would be, collecting this data and looking at it for patterns and then making a model to do something useful like forecasting demand for milk that could be used by the company to create value. Okay, so that's just one specific example, but most data science problems involve steps that are pretty similar. So typically you start out by figuring out what data you can collect, where's the data located, how do I collect it, how do I clean it, exploring the data, maybe making visualizations like graphs to understand patterns in the data, uh, then creating machine learning models. So those would be, that would be a uh, code on your computer that's able to do something intelligent like predicting demand for milk, okay? And we spend a lot of time in the course learning exactly how to do that. Um, then once you have your results, you have to decide how do you use them to gain business value? What's the action the company should take? And how do you communicate it to stakeholders like managers or other people in the company who need to use the results? Okay, any questions from the audience so far? Okay. Um, so that kind of sums up like what does a data scientist typically do? 
you're working on these types of problems, and there are all these different steps that you go through uh, in order to extract value from data. Now, different data science positions have their own balances between a few different types of skills, and we focus on all of these during the course. So first of all, collecting, pre-processing, cleaning, and visualizing data, um, just managing data in general is a huge part of the job of the data scientist. In fact, for most data scientists, this is what takes up the majority of your time. It's not necessarily uh, the hardest part of the job, but it is something really important because we're data scientists, so we deal with data. Um, so that's what I'm calling data engineering here. That's a big part of data science. Uh, the second important part or flavor of data science that I identify would be making algorithms to solve problems. So I'm calling that AI and machine learning. That's like, let's say, once I have the data on customers buying milk, I want to be able to predict how much milk is going to sell in this location. And to do that, I have to use some kind of machine learning algorithm, maybe even like a neural network. So the data scientist has to know all these different machine learning algorithms and when to apply them and how to use them. And that's something that we teach in the course. And finally, once you have a model that works, Someone needs to put it into production and maintain it so that it's running, so that people can use it. You know, if it crashes, why, what went wrong? That's what's called MLOps, machine learning operations. And that's in very high demand now by employers because they need someone who understands how the model works so that they can put it into production and maintain it. And we do uh, teach a lot of MLOps techniques in the course as well. So with the ITC Fellows Program, we teach all three. And most data science positions kind of combine all of these together, but maybe with different focus on one or the other, with like a different balance of these three different aspects of data science. Now, what does a data scientist need to know? Um, so the typical data scientist has a toolbox of all these different skills um, and in the course, we focus on teaching the essential skills that pretty much every data scientist is expected to know. So as I said before, data science is really interdisciplinary. It involves combining skills from multiple fields. And in particular, you really need to be a good programmer and you also need to understand math and statistics um, and how to use them together to create machine learning algorithms and even to put them in, into production. So in terms of programming skills, nowadays the machine learning ecosystem focuses mainly on Python. Some people use other languages, um, but really like the focus of the industry now is mainly on Python. And so we spend a lot of time in the course making sure that everyone has a very high level understanding of Python and especially data science specific libraries in Python, like NumPy, Pandas, et cetera. Uh, SQL is also used to extract important information from databases, and so that's required at a certain level for the pre-course, and we also go a little more in depth in the course on SQL as well. So that's the programming uh, section of the toolbox. The, the math and statistics section of the toolbox is equally important, so you need to understand probability theory, statistical hypothesis testing, and applications like A-B testing. So a lot of the time in companies, you want to say, figure out if one version or another of your product is better. And so you conduct a statistical hypothesis test. That's something that data scientists typically need to know how to do. And we do teach that in the course. Um, then we have machine learning and algorithms. So knowing all the classical machine learning algorithms, we go through them, algorithms for classification and regression. Um, and we also cover deep learning. So making neural networks, how do you pick the right neural network? How do you build them? How do you train them? How do you use them? Um, neural networks can be used to solve a lot of very complex problems, especially in fields like natural language processing and computer vision, um, which are quite hard to solve with classical machine learning. So nowadays, deep learning is in very high demand. And if you go through our course, by the end, you'll understand how to build uh, deep, learning, deep learning networks and how to use them to solve practical problems. And finally, MLOps. So we do also cover these technologies for taking a model and putting it into production and seeing that it's actually working.
Okay, so I'm not going to go through the whole data science syllabus, but if you want more information, you can contact me after the talk. I will say that this is what this is what the program looks like. So we go from the basics all the way from fundamentals, Python, SQL, etc., through core data science, which talks about classical machine learning models, and up to very advanced topics. So we talk about deep learning all of the essential neural networks you need to know about from fully connected networks to CNNs um, and even transformer networks. And finally, in the track section of the course, we have the computer vision track and the natural language processing track where you'll learn how to apply machine learning and especially deep learning to solve very complex problems. Like for example, identifying different objects in an image or taking a text and summarizing it into a shorter text. So as I said, we start at the basics and you can see some examples here, Python, Git, Linux, et cetera. Um, and we go all the way to very advanced topics. So deep learning, we cover all these different neural networks. And in the tracks, we talk about tasks like object detection, super resolution, very cool. I take an image and I wanna increase its resolution. So people apply this to things like, um, let's say there are examples on YouTube of videos from a hundred years ago, which are very low quality. And then you apply a super resolution neural network to it and you're able to get very high resolution video that looks like it was taken yesterday. Very cool. Um, natural language processing. So things like uh, text summarization, like I said, encoder decoder models, which can be used for uh, machine translation. If I want to have my computer translate text from English to Hebrew and so forth. Um, and at the very end, we talk about these really cutting edge topics. So GPT-3, which some of you might've heard of, and uh, CLIP, which now everyone is talking about in, uh, in computer vision. So again, we start at the basics and we go all the way to these very advanced topics. Uh, finally, I want to show an example of a data science project that one of our teams of our students worked on. So at the end of the course, after the, uh, after, well, actually throughout the last section of the course, students are working on this. And then at the end, after the tracks, everyone presents. So part of the course is that we have students work on a data science project, which emulates your experience in the industry. So you, you pick some kind of topic, just like the ones that companies are interested in, and you actually collect the data and make models and compare them and go through the entire process. And at the end, students actually write articles that show what they've worked on. And this is something that you can put in your resume afterwards. Um, from experience, it's very helpful for looking for data science jobs. But also students have worked on some really cool things. And so what's nice is we have uh, articles of the other projects students have worked on before that you can take a look at. So I just wanna show you one, which I thought was really cool. Um, so this project is from David Denby, Akiva Adler, and Samuel Abaton. Um, from one of the recent cohorts. They actually worked on a task related to autonomous vehicles. So specifically, they wanted to take images from like a car's dashboard and be able to say, okay, the road is here and maybe this is a person and this is a tree and so forth. In computer vision terms, this is called uh, image segmentation or semantic segmentation. Um, and so you can see that their title was, can three students in an Android app beat Tesla? I'm not sure if they beat Tesla, but they did something very cool and they even made an app. So I'll show you just an example of some of their results. I also think it's a nice illustration of what work as a data scientist is like. It shows you the kind of project that you might work on. So I'm only gonna talk about part of what they did but you can look up the article if you want more information. So one of the tasks they work on was lane detection, which means you have images of a road and you wanna detect where the lane is because obviously that's where the car should be driving. It should not be driving off of the lane, off of a cliff or whatever. Okay, so you can see on the left, there's an image of a road. Um, in the middle, you have the lanes. These are the correct lanes. And the right is the prediction. So what they found was they started out by creating a, a deep neural network and they trained it on examples of images and lanes. 
So it would see examples and it's supposed to learn, uh, it's supposed to learn where lanes are and then be able to predict that for new images. So what happens a lot of the time in data science is you start out by doing something and it doesn't work. And then you have to look at the data and think about the problem and try to figure out why. So I actually really like this example because it shows something that's really common in data science. In their case, they create this model. They looked at the model and it looked like it had 98% accuracy. So when they just looked at that, they said, oh, this model is really good. But then they looked at its predictions and it just always predicted background. It actually never found the lanes at all. So they got 98% accuracy because for most of the image, it's giving the correct prediction, which is background. The lanes are only a very small part of the image. So yes, it's 98% correct, but that's actually not very good because it didn't see where the lanes are, your car will drive off of the cliff, um, which is probably bad. So <laughs> how did they fix that? Um, well, they looked at the data and they saw that there wasn't a lot of diversity in the data set. They only had a small number of images and they knew from the clap, from the course that to train deep neural networks, you need to put in a lot of data and a lot of very diverse data. And so they used a trick which they learned uh, from the class called data augmentation, where you take the images and you move them around a little bit, you rotate them a little bit, and you get a lot more samples to train your model on. So they increase the size of the data set just by applying random transformations to the images. That's called data augmentation. And that actually fixed the problem. So once they did that, their model worked. And you can see the correct uh, labels in the middle and their model's predictions on the right. And it's almost exactly the same. Okay, now the car will not drive off the cliff. It will actually drive inside of the lane. So I thought it was very cool that they accomplished that. And it shows a kind of typical data science problem and how you would solve it. So I thought this was super cool. A lot of other students also worked on really cool projects, which I don't have time to discuss right now. But again, if you're curious, you can contact me after the webinar and I could give more examples. Okay, so in conclusion, I talked to you about what data science is in general, extracting value from data, um, using your hacking skills and statistics and math knowledge. Uh, we, I gave a bunch of examples of how data science is used in the industry. Um, we talked about what you typically have to do in a data science project and what a data scientist needs to know. And finally, uh, I showed you what we teach in our program and an example of the kind of project you'll be able to do if you take our program. Um, so that's everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, you can email me if you want more information. So my email is morris at itc.tech. Very easy to remember. So that's everything I wanted to talk about. Um, does anyone have questions for me before we go to the next speaker? Any questions about the syllabus, about the content? Yeah. Um, hey, mm -hmm. my name is Victor. Um, I already have some experience on data science. So um, I wanted to know whether for which kind of proficiency level on data science is this bootcamp for? For example, for me, which already worked with data science, um, let's say I have some knowledge on these topics. Um, I like to understand what uh, kind of, how deep do we go on those topics and whether can I take advantage from this bootcamp if I already have knowledge and sure. data science. Okay, so yeah, what I would say is, first of all, I think our course is very comprehensive. So we do try to go in depth into topics. Um, the focus is definitely on like being able to use them practically. So we do teach theory. Um, I want everyone to understand, you know, why the models work in the mathematical basis, but the focus is on actually being able to use the techniques yourself which is why we put so much focus on the project. Um, and, and really the goal is to get hired as a data scientist afterwards, which we have a very good record on. You know, most of our graduates are able to get 
um, data science jobs. So I think, first of all, you should think for yourself, you know, what your goal is. If you want to deepen your knowledge, I think it can be a good choice. And if you want more information about the syllabus, you can talk to me. Um, a lot of the time our students, you know, they want to learn more and they also actually want to work in the industry as a data scientist. And that's what we're preparing you for. So you might think first, like, you know, do you feel like you have the skills to work in the industry or is that, you know, are, are you missing some things? Um, and again, you can contact me if you want more detailed information about exactly what we teach in the course. Okay, I'll reach you out in a private message. Sure. sure. Okay, other questions from the audience? Uh, I just wanted to add uh, to what, what you just said, Morris, is that at the end of the day, you're not going to be bored. So even if you do come with some kind of uh, background or previous knowledge of something, our mentors always uh, have something more to give you and, and can point you into more advanced topics if you are interested in delving deeper into something and, and uh, we, we can keep you busy. <laughs> yeah, I can also say we're updating the contents of the course like regularly. So even this cohort, you know, we've ch I've, I've changed and added some things um, to be more state of the art because I want students to know basically the state of the art that they can use now. So topics like CLIP, for example, which is actually very useful practically, but it only came out like last year. Um, so I don't know if you've worked with it specifically, but you know, we're constantly changing and updating the syllabus so that it'll be more kind of state of the art. I just want to add that it, it's uh, maybe you should also save the question to Jake. We, he will talk now and uh, he has the same background. He came to ITC after he, he used to work uh, uh, with, uh, data, with data. And uh, so it would be interesting question to ask him also. So Baba. Okay, any more questions? Great. Uh, okay, uh, can we introduce- I can ask something. Ah, yeah, yeah. go ahead. Um, so the program seems really intense. Uh, so uh, of course the main focus will be like um, only this during this five months program, full-time program, but it's still, is it uh, too much to cover all of the, like the syllabus and all the things? And also, I want to know more about how the specialization works, like the division between computer vision and NLP. Sure. So first of all, yes, it is a very intense course. Um, I can say that I don't think it's too much. We see, like in practice, students come out of the program, and I think they've absorbed the material very well. And as I said, like we have a very good track record of students getting data science jobs afterwards. So I think you can, you know, look at the results, but yes, it is a very intense course. So that's something you should be prepared for, for sure. Um, and in terms of the NLP and CV tracks, so um, we actually, typically it's like one day is NLP and then the next day is CV. And depending on how a student is doing in the course, like if someone's totally on top of all of the core material, we'll recommend to do both. If someone still has gaps in the core material, we'll often recommend them to do one track and then in the free time from the other one to focus on the core material. So usually it depends on how the student is doing um, because the core material, like our number one priority is that students have all of the knowledge to be able to pass a data science interview. So that's priority number one. But if a student has that down, then we do recommend to do, it is possible to do both of the tracks. Uh, also, we, uh, during the admission, uh, we have to uh, show our skills in like uh, Python and statistics, statistics and et cetera. But there is also like one month preparation process before the, uh, before the uh, cohort starts. So can someone with a really less knowledge on coding can start the one month uh, pre-course process and continue with the, with the cohort itself? Um, if, if it's okay, like we have, a, we have our admissions team here that, and we have a, um, 
the like specific, specific yeah for, for, them. for them to talk about it and for questions uh about that so we'll definitely get to okay. that in a that's little a bit. great question okay. keep it for the that moment no spoilers okay, <laughs> okay. thank you thank you all right morris thank you so so much pleasure as always thank uh, you. and uh I'd like to hand it over to Jake. Hi, guys. Um, so thank you very much, Morris, for that very thorough introduction to the course. Uh, it was giving me great flashbacks. Uh, I'm an alum of 2019 October cohort of the Data Science Fellows. Um, I'm originally from the US, and I'm here to just basically tell you a little bit about my story. Uh, speak firsthand as, as a graduate um, working in the industry now and answer any questions you have about the course, about the industry, about my path before the course or anything else. Um, so I'll, I'll just briefly go over uh, a bit about my story, um, probably with a few gaps. So if there's any point where you get confused, uh, feel free to just um, barge in. I, I won't be offended. Um, so I, I studied at a liberal arts school in the U.S., and I actually entered uh, with the intention of being a philosophy major. Um, while doing philosophy, I also was coding in my spare time um, and just teaching myself from YouTube videos. And so I took a bunch of uh, computer science classes kind of out of interest and for fun and ended up with a computer science uh, major and philosophy major. So it's kind of two of my passions that I got to use both parts of my brain for. So that was really fun. Um, during that experience, I actually interned in Israel uh, with ITCs. At that point, they had an internship program in cybersecurity. And so that was my first introduction to the program, to the organization as a whole. And it really got me thinking about the fellows program because they already had a fellows program. I got to meet some of those fellows and I was very impressed by them and the kinds of things that they were doing um, and their backgrounds too. I mean, a lot of these people were coming from graduate schools or the industry or, and, you know, or, or even not at all, like uh, out of uh, being a stay at home parent and wanting to reenter the industry. So just really diverse stories uh, got me thinking about the course. Um, so, Fast forward a few years, I graduate college, and I actually get my first job in, after a few internships in software engineering mostly, I get my first job in a venture capital firm that specialized in artificial intelligence in the healthcare space. Um, so what I was going to do there exactly, I wasn't really sure, uh, but I found a great mentor who asked me a lot about my interests and uh, the kinds of problems I like to work on. And I didn't really, to be honest, know what the term data science meant back then. I'm kind of embarrassed to say. Uh, but he said, I think you want to be a data scientist. Uh, so I, I trusted him. He was a very smart individual uh, from Morris's alma mater. And he uh, guided me and helped me kind of teach myself the, the missing information that my computer science degree didn't quite cover. Um, so I eventually became, um, I mean, my title was a data scientist. And when I left the venture capital firm, my title was actually lead machine learning scientist. And, uh, you know, that was very nice and impressive and everything. But I was all self-taught and um, it was very much on the job, which was very interesting and very fun. We got to work on problems um, such as cancer detection, everything from uh, diabetes intervention to professional sports injury prevention. And I'm happy to go into detail about those if you want, but I felt like I was missing a lot of fundamentals. I was, there was a lot of gaps in my knowledge. So when it was time to look for another job, I felt like I was overqualified and underskilled, if that makes sense. Um, I didn't know what I didn't know, and as, as good as, as I was at teaching myself things online, uh, getting it in the right order and um, knowing exactly what the cutting edge was and what not to do and what to look out for, what pitfalls people fall into often uh, during this process was something I just, I didn't have. So a lot of the 
jobs I was looking at expected me to already have a lot of this information because it is a position for someone who uh, can can kind of overcome all of these challenges and has experience um, and and deep knowledge in a lot of these fields. But I thought I was missing some of it, and I and I really wanted to sharpen those sc skills before venturing back in and furthering my career in the industry. So I reached out to ITC and I had the same question as Victor, you know, how relevant is this for me? I looked at the syllabus and I spoke to the admissions uh, directors and they were very helpful. And I was basically, you know, making the decision, one, how much information would I gain from the course? Two, how much of a introductory introduction to the Tel Aviv tech community would I be given? And three, the social aspect of meeting other individuals entering the field at the same time. Um, so all of those, all of those factors made it actually pretty easy to not really care about the first one that much. And I can say after completing the course that um, I was very, uh, maybe even pleasantly surprised how much extra I learned um, in addition to being introduced to the high tech community and getting to study with some very talented individuals who I still stay in touch with today. Um, so I, I would say that if you have no knowledge uh, of data science, but you know how to code, then you should definitely consider the course. It's uh, extremely comprehensive. And even if you have knowledge like I did, uh, then it still has a lot of value, but it's like Morris said, a, a personal decision that you'll have to make um, as well. So, um, and I just want to mention that I had all, almost all of my uh, uh, fellow participants in my cohort did not have prior knowledge of, of data science. And by the end of the course, they were very proficient. So it's definitely not the norm. Um, yeah. So I, at this point, I think I've kind of covered, oh, and I'll, I'll just say where I work now, and then I'll take questions. So uh, so after, after ITC, I did, um, during ITC at the end, I did a project at uh, Waze at Google. And then I was actually hired and, and they kept me on for a year and a half. Um, at which point I decided to actually leave and go to booking.com where I'm now a machine learning scientist. Okay, so now uh, questions for me. Um, you can feel free to tell me a little bit about where you're at, what the decision point is. And you, you, you did ITC as an OSAP program, right? I did, yes. How, how, what did you feel that, the, why the decision to do this program as an OSAP program? What benefits did you feel that because it was MASA rather than making Aliyah and doing the program? So I think that coming to Israel is a, is a big decision and I, wasn't, um, I, I didn't go into ITC thinking or knowing that I would make Aliyah. I came into it because out of all of the programs that I could have done in the world, it made the most sense and I trusted it the most. Um, and it was in an amazing city as well. So I, I looked into graduate school programs. I looked into other boot camps and um, I, was, I was pretty convinced that ITC was the strongest fit. Uh, in addition to that, uh, I think that coming to Israel, if if you're considering it and and don't know a ton of people, or even if you know a few but want to grow your your social network and your professional network, um, you know, doing ITC as a kind of uh, entry to the to the country was a really powerful and useful, helpful thing for me. Uh, and and Masa added a, uh, some some Hebrew uh, training as well, um, which I, I try to use, but I'm not very good, so don't test me. And um, and some trips as well around the around the country, so I got to see a, a bit of the country while doing the course. Um, so if you have, uh, if you want to tell me about a bit about, you know, what decisions you're trying to make now and what decision point you're in and if it might apply or if maybe I know a friend who was in a similar position, um, I'm happy to answer any of those questions as well. Oh, 
Also, I know it can be a little bit intimidating on a uh, live forum, especially one that's recorded. So I will drop my email in the chat and feel free to email me as well if you have any questions at all. Just have a few slides that I wanted to share with you to welcome you here and give you just a little bit of context and background. Um, okay, so ITC, uh, we are a company owned by the Jewish Agency and we were founded in 2015 because believe it or not, Israel is a tech hub. We have all this talk about the uh, startup nation and I think all of us are here at the end of the day to kind of try to get into that uh, not only try to succeed in getting into that industry um, and, and becoming part of the uh, of the Israeli high-tech industry. Um, it's growing very, very fast um, and ITC was founded to uh, close the gap in uh, human uh, resources and in, in manpower and uh, um, of uh, positions of professionals that were, uh, there was a big lack. Um, okay, so we train, we train students. We, we're here for data science, uh, but we also have a full stack development program. We'll show you uh, kind of the overview in a little, in a little bit. Um, uh, but we're here to help you get into the industry as data scientists. Um, but as we know, we can't only refer to the hard skills. So everyone knows how to code. Everyone, not everyone knows, but we can teach, everyone can teach you how to code. That's not, uh, I guess that's not the only focus that we have in our programs. We also put a lot of focus on potential and soft skills and things that maybe uh, give you the added value when getting into the industry. So this means not only knowing how to code, but knowing how to function within a workspace and communicate as is, um, uh, appropriate to communicate and, and how you can get your foot through the door, not only with your technical skills, but also with your personal and your soft skills, um, which is why that uh, a lot of our focus throughout the admissions process is not only on um, what you do know now, but also on where you where we are able to uh, get you and how we can boost you further based on the potential that you show. Um, and a lot of these um, skills, I guess, around uh, problem solving uh, and knowing to work with the team. So not only working in a group and not only working um, uh, with your teammates and everything and with your classmates, but also being able to approach problems and solve them and work through them independently. Uh, we also focus on like a can-do approach, uh, uh, in Hebrew, uh, meaning that, okay, you don't give up. I, you believe in yourself that you can do this and that you're able to crack the code uh, and also motivation at the end of the day. You, you need to want to do this. Uh, and, and a lot of that push needs to come from you. Um, so that's kind of like our approach and our training method, um, just to bring you through the funnel of, of, uh, of ITC, uh, start with uh, a very rigorous screening process. I think maybe some of you are, uh, have started, uh, but if not, we have, um, we start with our programs with online screening tests and an English test because English is the language of high tech, it's the international language. Um, and it's a language that you'll need to be, you'll need to function in when you, when you get into the industry. Um, we have sets of personal interviews, technical interviews, uh, and also the pre-course, which is something that uh, makes sure that everyone, uh, like a certain assignment that you get to do before the first day of class to make sure that everyone starts at more or less the same level on the first day. Um, and we have a few training programs at ITC. As I said, we're here for data science and machine learning, but we also have a full stack development program uh, in data analytics. Um, data analytics, it's a, kind of a more entry level uh, field for data. Um, and we also have a few prep courses to help our students get into, get into these uh, full time programs. Um, when you're in the program, you're exposed to uh, a lot of, a lot of different uh, sessions. They're not only lectures, as I said, we also put a large emphasis on soft skills and we have a whole team here dedicated to working with the industry. So on the one hand, they work with you personally to get you prepared for the industry. Um, this means certain kinds of like mock interviews, uh, LinkedIn, your professional profile. Um, HR uh, interviews. HR interviews, yeah. Uh, 
various things, uh, but they also are in touch with all the companies. Uh, we have uh, connections with hundreds of companies uh, and they come and they sometimes they participate uh, in the programs themselves, for example, workshops within the data science program, a um, lot of networking opportunities, um, and they also host our students for projects uh, for a two month uh, uh, or five week non paid uh, internship to paid on, um, depending on the program that you're in. Um, and last but not least, the job market. So they're, they are also our partners for helping you find a job. They trust us, they know us, and they know that we produce um, very high quality graduates. Uh, and so we have uh, companies, we always look for new companies, but we also have quite a few that come back each, each, um, uh, each cohort uh, looking to recruit. Um, at the end of the day, overall, uh, since we were founded, we've been able to reach a 94% um, uh, success rate in finding it for the students that find a job within six months of graduating in their field of study. Um, and this keeps rising as we go along. Um, we work really hard to get to that number and we work really hard with each and every one of the students on, at a group level and also at a personal level uh, to help you become one of those success stories. Um, so, um, yep, as we said, I'm not gonna continue going into it. We have uh, over 1200 uh, graduates and over 300 partner companies. Um, and there, we also work with startups. We also work with bigger companies such as Google, PayPal, Microsoft, Outbrain, uh, all the companies that we know and we talk about um, on a daily basis. And whatever, what can I say now is only that I hope to see you become one of the people on the slide uh, in six to eight months. That would be, that would be so cool. Um, so who are we, what are we doing this evening? Uh, in the hour or so that we have, um, we'll be talking with Morris Alper, who is the data science tech lead from ITC uh, and is uh, a very, very significant part of your training here at ITC. Um, we'll also speak with uh, Jake, Jake and Morris. Do you want to just like raise your hands just to so we can see you? <laughs> So I, I, think, I don't know if I have to speak. Oh, here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just think wanted you can to point you out. There. Yeah. yeah. Um, perfect. Okay. So we have Jake and Morris. Um, hi, this is me, <laughs> the head of programs. And we also have Mirav here, and she'll be talking more about your life as a student on campus um, and, and our hybrid model. Uh, talked about what ITC is, we talked about what we do in the program, the content, we talked about what we do after the program. Now we're going to talk about what your life is going to look like as a participant in the program. Um, so I'm going to let my colleague here, Mirav, uh, introduce herself and talk more about what your day-to-day -day life is going to look like here. Okay, so hi everyone, I'm Mirav, I'm the Data Science Program Manager. Um, so a bit about how did they, they, they look like, it would have been, it's not gonna be long. Um, basically, we have a schedule of five days a week uh, learning uh, schedule. So in the mornings between 9.30 to 12.30, every day in the, in the I, I, I want to, so there are two kind, the two cohorts. Uh, we have the morning one and we have the evening one. So the morning one has five days a week, uh, 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 lectures um, program. And so in the morning between 9.30 to 12.30, you have uh, the, you have uh, lectures and then you have uh, on the afternoon uh, time to study. You will get assignments every day, which means that you will have to, you, you will need that time to get a chance to learn. Uh, the mentors will be there at that time to uh, answer your questions, help you with your, it's an, it's an individual work, but also to guide you when, when having some doubts regarding the assignments. Um, at the same time, those, those hours are also for uh, those CV sessions and HR sessions and all the extra curriculum that we talked about because IDC is not just about, um, not just about the, the technical part, but also to make sure that you will, be, you will have as many advantages as you can. Uh, going to the to the interview the the moment after the the course when the course ends um so the the afternoon will be uh for that time 
Um, so talking about the morning cohort, we work in hybrid mode, which means that the lectures are happening in campus. We are more than happy and uh, encouraging our students to come to campus to study here. Uh, but those of you who uh, might not be able that day specifically to come to campus, uh, you can do it through Zoom. The lectures are recorded. Um, I do want to say that we have some days that are mandatory presence on campus. Uh, days like um, the hackathon that we're doing, that uh, everything that is engaging with the industry for the HR session, for example, or for uh, workshops that, that are done by the industry. So you guys will get as many possible, as many options as you can to meet them face to face. Um, the evening cohort uh, happens instead of five days a week, twice a week. So you have two times a week, a lecture, and then you have two more times a week, three, sorry, three times a week, uh, what we call office hours, which are the times where the mentors will be uh, engaging and, and uh, be there to answer your questions. Usually they are available more than that, just that those are the official hours where you will be able to reach them and they will be uh, focusing just in answering your, your questions. Um, it's a, it, it takes a, it's a, a bit of a longer program in the sense of instead of five months, it's 10 months. Uh, but it's what will allow those of you who uh, still are working uh, at the same time to do both. So to uh, open new options to a different to a new career while doing uh, while having uh, the, the day, day that you already have. Uh, the content is the same um, basically, and uh, uh, the 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 order might be different, but it's the same uh, uh, way. Uh, all the lectures of the evening cohort are happening on Zoom, and we have three specific events where we ask the students to come to uh, campus. Those of you will do it uh, through the uh, in the evening cohort. Um, but besides that, it's happening on Zoom. Um, anything in there? Guys, it's just really fun to be here on campus. Even if there's not a mandatory day, we usually have quite a few students here. Uh, we have activities like, for example, today to, um, uh, I guess, honor, we can say, Yom HaShoah. We had a Zikaron Vassalon for those who are uh, familiar with, the, with that organization. We hosted a second generation Holocaust survivor who came and told her parents' story. Um, on a happier note, we also have happy hours every few weeks, the hackathon we do, and, and it's just a... Campus life is just, it's a, it's a fun place to be and having that social aspect. And um, I think uh, if Jake's still with us, then I think he can tell us the best about how you can't, you can't go through this experience without a buddy. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and even in the evening program where it's only on Zoom, um, there are a lot of like the framework doesn't leave you any choice but to communicate with other people um, virtually or face to face. Um, yeah, so that's also just a very uh, integrated part. And also you get a chance to meet your staff yeah. when you're here, so <laughs> it's always great. Love, yeah. Yeah, if uh, you can, definitely come to campus. Sorry, I'm getting ready for a wedding. Um, okay. <laughs> I highly suggest the, the social aspect and also the collaborative aspect. I remember lots of, uh, lots of evenings of collaborating with uh, my fellow participants, and that was really helpful. And we're also on campus. The program managers are on campus, and we're a we're a very important part of your of your experience here to help you personally um, get through everything. Um, do you guys have any more questions regarding the daily day in campus, or or to any of us? Maybe better to go through the admissions process and then we have a, yeah. a big Q&A on all questions. Definitely do that. Amazing. Okay, so, the, I'm, yeah. okay so I'm going to share my screen once again uh, for Melissa. All right. Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> I totally know who's taking this one over, so I wasn't prepared. Okay, hi everyone. Uh, so I'm Alyssa, I'm with the admissions process. Um, Rafi is here too. He's waving, if everyone can see. <laughs> and uh, 
we'll, we work together with the, everyone else that I see. All right, so the admission process for uh, the data science program is as such. Um, first of all, you guys have the initial call with us. All right, we talk to you, we see which program suits you better, whether it's the day one or the evening one. We get to see whether you have Python or not. We get to check um, all your, <clears throat> excuse me, everything that you need in order for you to be eligible. So in order to be eligible, you need to have a STEM degree. All right, science, economics, uh, science, engineering, uh, technological or mathematics. You can also have uh, econom uh, economics degree or mathematics degree, that's also fine. Um, and once you have that, then, then we're already at the next stage where do you know coding? Do you have any prior knowledge in coding with it, whether Python, SQL or yes or no? If you have Python and SQL, that's great. Then we can get to the next stage, which is um, the testing stage. All right, I will send you a test. We have a seven days to complete this test. You have mathematics, statistics, probabilities, uh, Python, and SQL. All right, you have seven days from the moment you click the link and you register to complete this test. After this test, you have the um, live coding session. Once you pass that, you have a live coding session with Felipe, who is not here this evening, but you can meet him probably at the open house on uh, on Monday. And then uh, after the that, you have the interview with Merav, who was just there. So you can, uh, you have the interview with her. After that, there's a signing of the terms and the down payment, and then you get your pre-course. The pre-course consists of uh, about 20, 30 hours of work. It consists of videos plus an assignment that you need to complete. And then the course starts. Now, if you do not have Python or SQL, don't worry, we have a solution for that as well. You have two, thank you, Molly. <laughs> you have slides for everything. <laughs> <laughs> so you have two options, or you study Python and SQL by yourself. All right, or we actually offer a introductory Python course where we really focus on uh, exercising. So you will get the basics, but you will also be exercising a lot for two and a half weeks. So if that's the case, if you're going for the Python uh, course track, you will actually start with a mathematical test to check your math skills. After that, you have an interview with Merav. Then you do your Python course. You've passed the Python course, you have another test, and then you have the technical review with uh, the technical um, test with uh, Felipe, okay, the live coding session. And then you go to the, to the uh, signing of the terms, the down payment, and then the pre-course. The test, uh, the, the Python course is actually the same, it, it's free. If you're going to be doing the, the full data science program, it's going to come out as free because uh, the admissions fee is the same as the as the deposit. So if you have Python, but you're still not 100% sure that this is that you're at the level that's required, we advise that you take the Python course as well, so that you exercise and that you, you really get the hang of it, because you really need the a good basics in order to start the course. Is there are there any questions regarding this? Can I? I think we had a previous question here from, from one of our participants. Yes, there was a question. It was about the pre-course, maybe. Basak? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Did, did we answer your question or it's uh, left open? Um, yeah, I think it's covered. Great. Um, now, also, we have uh, several different discounts if I'm allowed to. Can I talk about those? Yeah. All right. So we have different uh, different discounts available. Um, we have an early bird discount. All right. The early bird discount is uh, once uh, signing up up to two months before the program starts, you get a specific discount. If you sign up four months uh, prior to the course, you have a 4,000 shekel discount. Correct? 2,000 shekel discount. Yes. Sorry. My bad. Sorry, guys. Long day. <laughs> don't don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> so it's a two thousand shekel discount if you sign up up to four months in advance. If you sign up up to two months in advance, you get a 
um, a 1000 shekel discount. And I know that today, you know, if you guys are signing up for, for June or for the part time in August, uh, don't worry, we have a special extra 500 shekel discount, correct? 1000 shekel discount. I'm completely screwing it up. I'm giving it over to Lino. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Look, we're trying to be nice. But Melissa, both me and Melissa had a hard day today. Uh, but it's a good good day because, you know, good things happen. Um, as you guys know, we're having this webinar about introducing the field. And next week, we're doing the open house where you would really, if you can, and you're in the country, come see the campus. You know, meet, meet our tech mentors, meet the program managers face to face, uh, you know, raise a beer or wine a glass up on the roofs to see what our happy hours look like. Um, but for people who are coming to the webinar here today and next week, we are all extending the early bird offer. Um, one of the things that we do know about ITC um, is that we are really of a high caliber. And it means that we, one of the reasons for that is just because we invest in people that can teach on a very high level and we use as many resources as possible to get you into the industry. Um, that said, there is a price for this, and but we do offer a lot of grants and scholarships. Uh, you heard uh, Jake earlier talk about the fact that he came on this program as a MASA program, as somebody who's coming from abroad. For students that are already made Aliyah, there's also different kind of grants. Um, if you're an Israeli uh, and do not hold an American citizenship, you could qualify for Sahal, which are basically students' free loans. You're basically splitting up the entire, uh, the four, up to 40,000 shekels into 60 payments. It's $600, 600 shekels a month, for the next five years, but you are basically, you know, covering the entire cost of this program. No interest, uh, sorry, interest and in index is covered by ITC. We work uh, with Bank Discount, they give amazing loans, um, as well as um, we offer earn, uh, earn after you start. Sorry, pay only once you earn income shared agreement, uh, where you are being basically paying a down payment and then paying only on the month that you earn 10% of your income. So there is a wide range of scholarships and grants. The idea is that you there you want to upgrade your current career you know a little bit of python maybe you uh, you, know, you have a great head for data but you really want to transition into this field we use all our connections we saw that the last two cohorts reached 100 percent job placement with, within uh, six months and, and that's because the industry is starving israel needs data scientists it needs people that have the knowledge that we're teaching and we see that our reputation in this market in this small ecosystem is very strong so even if you don't come without connections, we help you build the connections. We had events where HR companies, uh, HR representatives from, from hundreds of companies just come to us and just interview our, interview students of the data science program. So you do get to that, you do, you do get where you want to go. Um, and we try to help you as much as possible. So I think I kind of, we covered the money, we covered the process, covered the what it is and how great it is. Um, ask us anything. Yeah, I think this is the time to open the floor to questions or any comments. Um, I'm going to make it life easier and easier. I'm going to stop the recording so that you guys could feel comfortable yeah. asking questions. Yeah. Um,